It's your girl Stephanie and I'm chilling here with my lovely husband Hungani and together we are the Doves and this is the Doves and Cats. Bam, 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 bam. <laughs> if you've joined us right now you are here because of the title intimacy after having a baby. <sighs> some of you might relate, some of you might not relate, some mm -hmm. of you might be questioning. So we hope that our wondering. conversation, wondering, mm -hmm. you know, will give some enlightenment in our journey, you know, and if you have a journey regarding this topic, please do comment down below so that we can share, you know, our opinions yeah. and our stories and just uh, continue to grow as a community. Yeah. But before that, make sure you like, make sure you comment, and make sure you subscribe for the algorithm. Indeed. Okay, so where do we start? All right. So for those who don't know, um, we have a baby. We have a baby, Rulani, and um, check the videos down in this description to see like our pregnancy journey and all of yes. that stuff. Yes. Obviously, you know, after having a baby, a lot changes, right? I grew taller. <sighs> <laughs> Anyway, and one of the things that definitely changes, I think, for every couple, every woman, um, even though we're all different, is intimacy, right? Um, but I think just before we get into that, what is your definition of intimacy? My definition of what intimacy? What do you think intimacy is? Yeah, like. I think it's being able to spend uninterrupted quality time mm -hmm. and energy mm -hmm. with a significant other. Mm -hmm. 100% agree. Like great sex is a byproduct of great connection and intimacy. It's not a replacement for or a source of. I think I just wanted to say that because a lot of the times when you say intimacy, people automatically go sex. Mm. And though sex is part of intimacy, it's not the only you know, yeah. um, it's not the only thing that, that sort of uh, defines intimacy. Yeah. So we're speaking about how intimacy on all spectrums sort of change after having a baby. Yeah. <sighs> Should I start? <laughs> I mean, I think so. <laughs> okay, this might be, let's, you know what, let, let's, let's, let's put it out there. I could mm -hmm. be wrong, fine, and I don't want to start fights, but I think that um, because we're the ones who carry. Yes, mm -hmm. the changes affect us as a couple, but I think the bigger change happens with the woman, in nah, my opinion. Nah, nah, me, I'm joking. Yeah. And I say that for a number of reasons. Yes, mm. at the top, the first thing you're going to think of is physically, right? Because physically, mm. so much changes. Whether you gain a lot of weight, whether whatever happens, whether you're breastfeeding, the biggest thing for me was my hormones mm. and my hormones taking so long to actually just regulate and get back to, you know, yeah. in the midst of having, this is our first child, you know, in the midst of trying to breastfeed a baby who doesn't want to be breastfeed either, you know, mm. there's so many changes happening that I think um, us kind of ends up taking a bit of a, a backseat mm. um, in those initial few months. So for me, I think that um, women are, like, but women are more affected. <laughs> um, if they, it's not a competition, but mm -hmm. if I were to look at our experience um, on some levels, where after having a baby is concerned and where intimacy is concerned. What role did that play in the, our us being intimate? So, By saying women are more affected, yes. what, what are you insinuating? Well, I'm insinuating for me personally because I went from like, like physically looking a certain type of way and feeling a certain type of way and that leads to uh, when we're intimate. Now, I'm speaking about intimacy, sexually intimate mm -hmm. specifically. Um, you know, feeling like sexy and like after having a baby, I just didn't feel sexy and I mm. didn't feel um, like I wanted necessarily to be like touched or, you know, mm. um, for you to even give me attention because I was just like, oh my gosh, I had a C-section. What is happening? You mm. know, my nipples are on fire. Um, everything just feels like 
my, which it really has, but my insides have been turned inside out and put back in. Mm. And I still need to be um, present and okay because there's a baby that needs us but is attached to me. Do you get what mm. I mean? So for me, it was like, okay, you you went to work pretty soon after, you mm. know, and I was like with baby and I was with her all the time and right at the beginning, the first three months, they're so like needy and demanding and that kind of stuff mm. um, that I just didn't feel like myself, you know, and then now when we have to be close and intimate and together, I'm just like, where? In what capacity? Mm. With what part of me? Honestly speaking. And I think that's what I mean when I'm like, I feel that on an emotional and or maybe more on a physical kind of mm. a factor that then leads to our emotions as well. Um, women tend to be, I, let me not generalize for a woman, I was um, very much affected. What was the biggest thing that affected you? So I think it's um, it's like a dual kind of thing because if you are affected, the byproduct is that I'm affected. Yeah, yeah. So I personally don't think that there is a one or more that is affected than the other because either one being affected affects both mm -hmm. because your level of um, affectedness, whether it's hormones, whether it's how you feel, whether it's trying to understand all yeah. of what's going on, all of that directly affects me. Mm -hmm. And it also puts me in a place where, or put me in a place where I was trying to assist mm -hmm. in you finding yourself or feeling better about yourself or mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, which is a dual thing. So I think for me, the, the biggest thing was trying to help, but not really knowing how to help because it's such a sensitive thing because it's very now very relevant mm -hmm. and to not like keep probing and poking because I don't always know like, if it's something you want to talk about or if it's something you just want us to sit in and just yeah. like be quiet and just sit together. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, that was, that was the biggest challenge. Like, how do I assist you in something mm. that I can't change your hormones? I can't make them regulate as quickly as whatever. I can't help you heal from the C-section mm. and all of that. I can't make you feel sexy if you don't feel sexy yeah. like the, all of these things like so where do I assist you yeah um, which I think was my my biggest challenge um, but for myself it was also like trying to understand what does what does our intimacy look like now nah. that we yeah. do have a baby because like we are being intimate with our baby yeah in the very moment when you're struggling with all of this, you're still carrying out intimacy with Rue. Yeah. And I'm still carrying out intimacy with Rue. And in some of those instances, we carry out intimacy, all three of us together, yeah. when we are whatever, laying in the bed or whatever the case might be. So I think it was just like, for me, trying to navigate assisting you more than thinking of myself. I think I didn't really process much of how I feel mm -hmm. but more of especially because I saw mm -hmm. exactly what happened to you yeah and all of it but that but she so said it was sorry like, to break I you know already. it's like a lot yes but that that's happened. but that's why I was saying it's not by any means or measure a competition we mm -hmm. go through it differently but what I was um insinuating earlier about women is the very things that you're describing now is that yes by virtue of it affecting me it affects you but in the physical sense of it it is not your actual hormones that are be that that's being challenged it's not your actual body that's been chopped up and cut up and put back in place mm. and that's what i was referring to when i say yes both men and women are, are affected by you know a baby but I think that the way in which um, 
the sacrifices and the things that, and it's beautiful, don't get me wrong, but the, the things that are required from us as women is actually just more from even just no, the physical that's a fact, side. And but so, that's not in conjunction with intimacy. That's in conjunction with having and housing and birthing a baby. Yes, yes, yes. But it affects the very, all those physical aspects of birthing, housing and whatever. So mm. what I'm trying to say, it has a ripple effect on everything. Mm. So because of the housing and the birthing and the physical aspects and the emotional aspects and the hormonal aspects, mm. it impacts intimacy, which then impacts you. So what I'm saying is that this ripple effect that's created starts primarily with us and us having, you mm. know, to be. So a lot of the times I'll give you an example, like, um, when, when it was like, when, you know, Ru was still like a few weeks old and you're really trying to stay afloat. I had a number of breakdown days for one, because I think that you ask yourself, like, am I even doing the right thing here? Mm -hmm. You know, you question, we question like, my gosh, are we actually, you know, yeah. doing, doing the right thing? But also I think because you, for me, went back to work so quickly and that wasn't anything of anything. That's what needed mm. to happen. Do you know what I mean? Um, there were some times where I was like genuinely envious, you know, mm. and, and I know we're speaking about intimacy right now, mm. but I'm we saying, digress, but it's okay. But the digression is on point with how all of this impacts our time together, which is mm. intimacy. So my point is you would then go to work. I'm at home. I'm with her all day and mm. so forth, you get back because of the type of work you have and you're equally tired, you're exhausted, um, you don't sleep through the night because you're also waking up when she wakes up, but you still have to go to set. I'm exhausted and I'm tired from actually being present with a mm. baby. So when we have to now come together, we're exhausted, mm. really. We're just tired. Yeah. And so that will impact your intimacy because you will choose I'm going to sleep where I can sleep. You know, yeah. your levels of frustration is a lot higher. Your levels of mm. irritation is a lot higher, you know. And that's what I mean with, like, it impacts everything. everything. Yeah. And everything about intimacy and being together and spending quality time together and stuff. And the way you were prior, it's like a mind shift that just kind of has to happen. And that's mm. how I was saying, like, sometimes we're like, I'd rather be on set right now i'd rather mm. i'd rather be dealing with that right and now because sometimes he'd come home and be like here you go mm. i need to go take a shower you know and mm. just a bath for however long so um i think that the biggest thing for me was everything that was happening and the ripple effect that it had and yeah. impacted intimacy um, but the, the, the main thing that it also boiled down to was just for the first few months, you're just level of exhaustion yeah. and the two of you kind of your romantic relationship and just, you know, level of whatever takes a bit of a, a backseat. Yeah, I think it's bound to, because like you've introduced a whole new dynamic to your yeah. life, to your relationship. You have a whole new level of responsibility um, but also you've like, it is, it's like a pinnacle moment yeah. of life. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's huge. Yeah. And I think something of that magnitude is bound to change so many aspects of one's life. And I mm. think the, the most important part of, of all of this is that within all the difficulties and within all the challenges, it's where growth happens, yeah. you know? And I think the, the beautiful thing about this journey or about this conversation is learning how to be intimate again, yes. because you can find complacency or uh, places of comfort and, yeah. and no longer really strive for yeah. intimacy and towards it. Yeah. where this puts you in a position where it's like, okay, this is how I feel. This is what's going on. I've got a lot on my mind. I've got work. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. But I haven't held my wife's hand in a mm. long time. Mm -hmm. I need to go hold her hand. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the beauty of this because it makes you intentional, number mm. one. It makes you more present, number two. And also it makes you more willing because mm. it's like you feel the if I can say the emptiness yeah. of it. And it's like, no, like I really want to cuddle or I really yeah. want to do something special, whether it's go buy flowers or whatever the case might be. Um, so I think there's, yeah. 
it's that thing of um what's it the the rose that grows out of the concrete i forget the analogy yeah. but it's that that yeah, thing and, where and, yeah and um, I th- beauty comes out of hardship yeah and i think also all of that aside you mm. know if like if you're either expecting or you you know in the just first had just had a baby you know or even you've had and you can relate it gets better I know mm. everyone says that and you're like, when in that moment? But it really does. Yeah. You guys get into a routine and a groove and you learn your baby and you mm. you figure it out and your sleep gets better and everything that felt like it's just never going to get better gets better when it does get better, mm. however long that might be. But also, very important, guys, which I have zero patience in but i'm working on it have patience with yourself mm. with each other with this huge like i'm going to say like change that has just happened and don't have expectation to kind of live up to match up to not just things you see out there but mm. also like um, other couples and people's experiences because your experience is your experience yeah. tailor made for you mm. and your household however somebody snap back is that how you say mm. it? Mm. the snap back of of timing whether it's you know the body and all the pressure and we people put on don't ourselves. tell you how they snap back and people back, also don't so tell don't you how so don't your... even think it's just but even if it is the case that they just did or whatever the case might be mm. you know Try your utmost to say this is our story, this is our journey, this is how it's unfolding mm. in our home and alleviate some of that expectation and pressure from mm. yourselves, you know, because at the end of the day, things are not always as they seem, one, but two, which is very different. Yeah. There might be, you know, some other woman right now or couple even that experienced their first child and had complete bliss. It mm. was as if, Nothing changed. Maybe. Mm. I'm just saying maybe. No, it, it maybe happens. there's, there's it that happens. way. It's just like, boom, came, beautiful. Intimacy was the same. Couldn't wait to get back into, you know, romantic intimacy as well. Mm. Um, like, you weren't even trying to wait for the six weeks to, you know, they're like, it's mm, for wait, C-section. Six, mm. C-section, wait six weeks. I'm not sure how much it is for a uh, natural sure. birth, um, you know, to be intimate some people are like women are like i am i'm I'm ready day four i don't know but the point is it's just your journey tailor-made for you Mm. how it is be patient take your time and guys i'm saying this whilst i'm sitting here whilst i'm in it practicing it i've not Mm. mastered it trust Mm. me ask kungani we've had many (laughs) listen many conversations This is take two of this video. Let me put it that way. That is very true, Take one was was a mess. mess. (laughs) Because why? We hadn't had time when we were intimate and intentional about spending time together in a long time because work has been immense. And then we decided to make... And then we tried to make this video. Whilst having... Whilst having... Just the same day... A, a difficult moment. A difficult conversation like, about the very same topic. So yeah. then we sat down talking about, about intimacy when. So you can imagine that. In a fact, mess. I'm going to put like a snippet okay. just so you can see <laughs> the tension <laughs> right at the end of this video. Um, so yeah, yeah. Silliest decision ever. But that's the realness of it. And that's yeah. not that long ago. It was now, now. Yeah, a few days ago. Day. Just the other day. So we're not sitting here like you know experts on it but definitely the takeaway would be um be patient with yourself you know Mm. take time with yourself with each other communicate talk Mm. and just appreciate try to be present in the moment for what it's worth Mm. but it gets better and listen yeah to one another also it's okay to ask for help whether Mm. it's um asking like being honest with one another and saying this Mm. is what i'm struggling with or even going a step further and saying, I just don't feel like we're coping, I'm coping mm. and reaching out, whether it's, you know, to a therapist, whether it's to your doctor, you know, there's mm. a lot of things happening and don't feel like this is only happening to you. Mm. You know, though our stories may be different, but you, but there's also a lot of similarities in the mm. things. And it sometimes helps to feel like I'm, um, or to know that you're not the only one, but just if you think it's too much and it is extremely overwhelming, 
ask for help, lean on family, lean on professionals, lean on each other, mm. um, lean on God also, most importantly, Amen. right at the top of that. Lean on God and just, it's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful journey. I love where we're at right now. So the camera just died. Um, all three batteries apparently are flat, but yeah, I think we kind of got to the end of the video. So the end of the video is a vlog. I mean, it's not a vlog, it's just it's done from our phone. Um, but yeah, it was <laughs> definitely a great way to end. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, for real, if you guys um, resonate with anything that was shared, please make sure that you like the video. If you got to this point, I mean, really, you gotta like the video. Comment down below if you uh, resonate with the experiences that we've been sharing or if you've had a total different experience, yeah. um, just comment down below. Let's let's see what, what people are going through and how you're dealing with it. Yeah. Um, I think it's always nice to, it's almost like when you're checking out a restaurant or something and you check out the reviews, you know, this is another way for people to read and see that, oh yeah. my gosh, I'm also going through the same thing that Uspanbani went through because they commented in the comment section and they got to read about yeah. it. So don't take that for granted. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe because our next live session is only for our subscribers. Yes. And um, yeah, I'm about to put that clip of our first round of intimacy with a baby. Keeping it real, guys. <laughs> We're keeping it real. It's just a snippet. Bye. Bye. Ah, yo. I'm tired. <laughs> this is our first day back, baby. You need energy. You can't yeah. come back tired. You can't be yawning and sighing. And why are you tired? Okay, let's start over. Okay. Take number two. Ready? Yeah. Actually, I have to this back. Pretend. See.